It's been a while, and I don't know if anyone's still here to watch my videos, but if you are, I hope you're glad I'm back. If not, that's fine, just watch the video. Today, I'm gonna be looking at probably one of the most slept on keyboards of 2020-23. I've been needing a wireless budget board for a while now, and after the release of this one, I knew I had to get it. I already have it built here and ready to go, but I'm still going to show you what I did to get it sounding like this, the parts I used, and the mods. Alright, so starting off, I got the keycaps. These are knockoff keycaps of GMK White on Black, and I got them for $37. Now, this was kind of an accidental purchase because I didn't realize that there was a shipping fee of $10. I thought this was going to cost me $24, but instead, I overpaid. I mean, at least they look pretty cool, right? Alright, so underneath these keycaps, we have the switches, and I happen to be using one of the most popular switches out there right now, the Akko V3 Cream Blue switches. Similar to the cream yellows that are an even more popular switch right now, they are a very smooth switch when lubed and sound pretty good for the semi-budget price point of $13 for a pack of 45, which is how much I paid after they went on sale at Amazon. The price varies pretty often, but you can always buy them on the official Akko website or you can find a good deal for them on AliExpress. Next up is the keyboard itself. This is the main focus of the video, so let me show you what's up. First, let's start off with the fact that this is a wireless board supporting a USB dongle, Bluetooth, and of course, you can opt to use a cable if you would like. I think that wireless boards are the cleanest for setups, and they are more convenient in general if you need to move them around your desk or take them with you somewhere. So here's a little bit more of an obvious feature of the kit, and it's the aluminum knob located in the top right corner of the kit. This adds a little bit more class to the keyboard, making it feel a bit more premium, but it also serves as a volume control knob and even serves as a mute button if you press down on it. The keyboard kit itself is made out of a two-piece clipped together plastic case, and here's what I mean. To take it apart, you need to pull it apart basically, and this is pretty difficult. But once you get a small crack made, you can slide a card down the edge and pull the pieces apart. I know this is getting a bit boring, but I'm almost done. Next, we have a polycarbonate plate for the switches, some pour-on foam, some kind of plastic PCB pad, of course the PCB or motherboard circuit with south facing RGB lights, a silencer sponge or a normal person would say case foam, and that's actually basically it other than this stuff and the battery, and of course the gaskets. What did I do for the mods? It really wasn't much at all. I did the tape mod which requires you to tape the PCB with masking tape, lubed the switches with knockoff crytox, modded the stabilizers heavily with both the holy mod and dielectric grease, assembled the whole thing back together, and this is what it sounded like after. <laughs> 